But what we learned really quickly, um, especially starting in March when schools and um, kind of our broader state and world started to get shut down, was that we had to be agile and we had to be responsive to these unique needs. For us, Wi Fi on Wheels really came out of organic conversations with educators themselves. Um, when we asked some of the educators that we worked with, you know, what do you guys see, you know, as schools are shutting down, what's the number one issue that you're concerned about? We were honestly very surprised that the number one thing was Wi-Fi access. Um, what the teacher shared was, you know, many of their schools actually had enough uh, devices, whether or not it's iPads or Chromebooks, to lend out to families. But not every family has um, reliable Wi-Fi access at home. When we kind of asked around to the Department of Education and tried to figure out if other folks were working on this, you know, we'd love to support those kinds of efforts. You know, we started to realize that, you know, maybe the help that we're looking for is us, that it's not being worked on by anybody else. And since then, it's been just a really exciting opportunity for work to work with so many great educators and schools and uh, private partners such as at t Verizon and Cradle Point and local funders and supporters such as Kamehameha Schools, which has done a lot of heavy lifting in this area as well. And it honestly started with, um, you know, kind of a simple pilot based out of YNI at Kamile Academy. As of right now in March, um, we're actively involved in nine specific regional sites and we continue to consult with a wide range of groups, including Rotary Clubs and nonprofits on, you know, what have we learned about this model and is it something that might be um, helpful for their particular community? You know, we saw it as it's not just about learning loss or keeping up with school. It's, you know, how do those students feel like they're part of a broader community in a world that, you know, was shut down. And so the teacher, uh, Sarah Milianto Laffin, who is such a rock star on this, and she was one of the original core team that got this going. She had um, said, you know, a paper packet can't ask you how you're doing as a student. If we've learned anything through this pandemic is that those human connections are so important. We've really uh, enjoyed being part of the state's broadband hui. And I think honestly, we're gonna have to have this digital equity and internet connectivity conversation for you know, years to come, about three months ago, where um, my son, who's my first child, was born um, on December 17th. And, you know, it's one of those life-changing moments where, um, you know, even though I've been a teacher, I've been, you know, working for, um, you know, Hawaii government and, um, you know, been an advocate, you know, really personalized it to me that, um, there's only so much time to, to solve some of these challenges, right? And I'm really thankful to um, partners like the Hawaii Children's Action Network that are working on so many important issues, you know, to, to fight for working families and make sure that um, we tackle some of these major policy issues that are, um, you know, make it so much harder for us to achieve generational sustainability. So I hope this is, we'll look back at this, this pandemic as the start of a new Hawaii that really does, um, you know, that really is a home for these future generations.